morning. <clears throat> we celebrate Mass for the 23rd Sunday. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Coming together as God's family with confidence, let us ask the Father's forgiveness, for he is full of gentleness and compassion. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts, in my words, what I've done, what I've failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O oh God, by whom we are redeemed and receive adoption, look graciously upon your beloved sons and daughters, that those who believe in Christ may receive true freedom and an everlasting inheritance. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, it is widely reported that there is immorality among you an immorality of a kind not found even among pagans, a man living with his father's wife, and you are inflated with pride. Should you not rather have been sorrowful? The one who did this deed should be expelled from your midst. I, for my part, although absent in body but present in spirit, have already, as if present, pronounced judgment on the one who has committed this dread, this deed, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. When you have gathered together, and I am with you in spirit, with the power of the Lord Jesus, you are to deliver this man to Satan for the destruction of his flesh, so that his spirit may be saved on the day of the Lord. Your boasting is not appropriate do you not know that a little yeast leavens all the dough? Clear out the old yeast, so that you may become a fresh batch of dough, inasmuch as you are unleavened. For our Paschal Lamb, Christ, has been sacrificed. Therefore, let us celebrate the feast, not with the old yeast, the yeast of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. <clears throat> the word of the Lord. Be right. For you, O oh God, <clears throat> pardon me, lead me in your justice, Lord. Lead me in your justice, Lord. For you, O oh God, delight not in wickedness. No evil man remains with you. The arrogant may not stand in your sight. You hate all evildoers. Let lead me in your justice, Lord. You destroy all who speak falsehood, the bloodthirsty and the deceitful, the Lord abhors. Lead me in your justice, Lord. But let all who take refuge in you be glad and exult forever. Pro protect them that you may be the joy of those who love your name. Lead me in your justice, Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. On a certain Sabbath, Jesus went into the synagogue and taught. 
and there was a man there whose right hand was withered. The scribes and the Pharisees watched him closely to see if he would cure on a Sabbath so that they might discover a reason to accuse him. But he realized their intention and said to the man with the withered hand, come up and stand before us. And he rose and stood there. Then Jesus said to them, I ask you, is it lawful to do good on a Sabbath rather than to do evil, to save life rather than to destroy it? Looking around at them all, he said to him, stretch out your hand. He did so, and his hand was restored. But they became enraged and discussed together what they might do to Jesus. The Gospel of the Lord. St. Paul used some rather harsh language about the fact that a Christian man in Corinth was living with his stepmother, namely his father's wife. Not only did Jewish law forbid this, even the Greeks and the Romans condemned such relationships. St. Paul strongly opposed the relationship, but what really upset him was the fact that the Corinthian Christians not only tolerated the situation, but they took pride in their liberal view of sexual morality. They thought that they were exempt from laws against such behavior. So Paul must have felt like a policeman who has arrested a criminal but finds that people are jeering at him for doing so. And so Paul uses his authority to expel the guilty person from the community. Paul's intention is not to punish the man, but rather to lead him, rather to salvation. As Catholics, we know we must not, reje we must not reject or feel haughty toward a Catholic who is trapped in an invalid marriage, yet we cannot pretend that divorce and remarriage are totally acceptable unless there are grounds for an annulment. Likewise, we need to try to help a woman who believed that her only choice was to have an abortion. We don't condemn the sinner, but condemn the action, however, as evil. Christ was always forgiving and compassionate towards sinners, but he also made it clear that they should not repeat the sin. Go, your sins are forgiven, and sin no more, he would say. Again, the Gospel shows how Jesus confronts the religious leaders who were so fixed on tradition and laws they could not see beyond the letter of the law. So Jesus deliberately chose to heal a man on a Sabbath, which they regarded as unlawful, to teach them that charity has no law. Compassion must come before merely observing a religious law. Sometimes Catholics have allowed themselves to feel guilty for missing Mass on a Sunday, and you learn that it was because they were caring for a sick person at home or they were sick themselves. They fail to believe, believe in necessity excuses from the law. So Jesus was showing the religious authorities their failing to improve the quality of the man's life was as sinful as doing a person harm. We need to learn that love must be the number one commandment above all other laws. So what we give from these scriptures today, we pray that we can develop the right attitude about keeping religious laws, that we always act out of a spirit of genuine love and compassion for others.
confidence in God's mercy, we present our needs and those of the world to our loving Father. For the, for the gift of unity in the church, that God's laws of love and forgiveness be, be in our minds and written upon our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For <coughs> peace in our hearts, our homes, and our world, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have asked for our prayers, and for those in special need of prayer, that <coughs> Jesus may restore what is withered in their hearts, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are sick and suffering, that they may find comfort and healing. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Rita Wilkins, whom we remember in a special way during this Mass, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the intentions of our parish prayer line, the intentions in our parish prayer boxes, and for our own special intentions. We pray to the Lord. Let us pray, loving Father, we offer all these prayers to your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Bless thy Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Through the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. <clears throat> Bless thy Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, <clears throat> fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. O humble spirit, conjure your heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord, and our sacrifices this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. <clears throat> and sisters that this sacrifice <clears throat> may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. O oh God, who gave us the gift of true prayer and peace, graciously grant that through this offering we may be you fitting homage to your divine majesty and by partaking of the sacred mystery may be faithfully united in mind and heart through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. <clears throat> Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him you have been pleased to renew all things, giving us all a share in his fullness. For though he was in the form of God, he emptied himself, and by the blood of his cross brought peace to all creation. Therefore, he has been exalted above all things, and to all who obey him has become the source of eternal salvation. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts. 
Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the founder of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed unto willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. <clears throat> In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess the resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and a chalice of salvation, giving thanks as you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. <clears throat> Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Frank, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them in the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, St. Joseph's spouse, and all the apostles and all the saints who please you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and we praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. The Savior's command informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. We await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. <clears throat> Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. We live and reign forever and ever. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. 
Lord, I am not worthy that you shall not under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. God of Christ, give me say the to you.
<clears throat> Let us pray. Grant that your faithful Lord, whom you nourish and endow with life through the food of your word and heavenly sacrament, may so benefit from your beloved Son's great gifts that we merit an eternal share in his life who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. And Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And as now let's go in peace to love and serve the Lord and one another. Be our Holy Queen, our mercy, our life, our sweetness, and our hope. To thee do we cry, for banners, children of thee. To thee do we send up our sighs, mourning, weeping, this valley of tears. Turn that most gracious advocate, the eyes of mercy towards us. And after this our exile, show unto us the blessed fruit of thy own Jesus. O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary, pray for us, the Holy Mother of God, and the worthy of the promises of Christ. Have a good day, everyone.